a lot of our beginning orchestra classes and our non-varsity middle school classes are very technology driven. And I think that's great to have all the multimedia, to have the smart music going on and the metronome going on, to have all the lights and all the, the stimulating devices that are, that are talking to you in, in the rehearsal. That's all great. And, but, but what that means is that we don't typically do a lot of conducting in, in those classrooms. And I don't necessarily think we should be conducting. I don't, you know, when I teach a beginning orchestra class, I'm not up there with a baton, you know, just beating time. No, I'm, I'm over there working with them. I'm demonstrating by rote. I, I probably, they won't even see a baton until, you know, we, we start working on concert music. And I'm not walking around the sections or anything. But, but let's be mindful when we do have the metronome on and we do have the smart music playing or, or whatever you want to use, music first or Whatever, whatever technology that you like in your classroom, what are you doing? Are you beating time along with the metronome? And, and if so, why? Because they're already getting that information uh, from the metronome. Why are you beating time with the metronome? And if they're playing along with a track that, that's on the overhead projector or, you know, smart board or whatever you have, why, why are you beating time with that? I would encourage you when those activities are going on to Get off the podium and, and walk through your orchestra and, and go around and fix bow holds. You know, go around and, and, and fix bow motion. You know, fix, fix bow arms and fix all that stuff. Don't give them stuff that they don't need because the more you do that, the less they're going to watch you. When you're doing your rote teaching, learn how to cue your students in with your breath. Okay? One, two, three. When you inhale, your students need to inhale. Everybody breathes together and everybody plays together. And that's where we all feel the preparation at the same time and then come in when we're supposed to. At some point, you're going to need to wean your students off of the metronome and you're going to have to get them to follow you. If you're counting your students in, you're still giving them an auditory cue instead of a visual cue. So to wean them off of that, Give them a breath because they're going to get an audio cue from the breath, but they're also going to get it visually and they're going to have to participate in that process by breathing with you. Are there places in your warmups where you can give them dynamics with your left hand? One piano, two mezzo piano, three mezzo forte, four forte. Just have them play their warmups and just watch you. Watch for what dynamic they should be playing. Are there places in their warm-ups or technique where you can cue when they go on and they don't go on until you give them the cue? That way they have to watch and follow you. Are there places in your rehearsals where you can stop your students non-verbally and see who keeps playing? Now, if you're going to do that, it's a good idea to warn your students. Just tell them, hey, I'm going to stop you at some point. I'm going to do like this and you're going to stop. And I don't want you to be the last one playing. That way the students expect that it's going to happen and you're not just doing it out of the blue and then say, oh, how come nobody stopped? You know, you want them to be able to expect that. And that way you'll, you'll get a better result and you'll get the, atten the intention of what you're doing will come off. At some point, you might want to beat time with the right hand and give dynamics with the left hand so that they can see different sensory information here. When do I play and how do I play? Specifically to clog dance, you can do things to change up the music to make yourself less predictable. And if you're less predictable, they're going to have to watch. If you do it the same way every time, they don't need to watch. But for instance, right here in 7 and 8, you could add a retardando, okay? You could do whatever you wanted there. You could play it almost like there's a, there's a sasura in between each quarter note here. So you could go one... Three, you know, you could just give them each note and, uh, and, and change it up. Change it up every time. So rather than having my students bury their heads in the music, I, I make them watch me because there's an there's a intention or, or a purpose behind what I'm doing where, where they have to watch. This is something that you need to set up weeks in advance before the performance because if you, you know, like, like a week out from the performance, that's, that's the, the day you decide to turn off the metronome and see if your students can do it without it. Well, by the time you're on the stage, if something goes wrong, 
you're very l- unlikely to be able to do anything about it at all. They're just going to do what they're going to do, and you're just kind of there for decoration. Some general ideas for for clog dance. Less is more. Don't overconduct. Okay. Think about when you conduct. Think about using three to four inches from from your beats most of the time here instead of these grandiose gigantic gestures the more you move the harder it's going to be for your students to follow you and think think about you know your principal cellist and if you're beating time like a maniac you know they're having to to watch you know all of this other stuff but if you're just giving them a concise beat and it's it's within your line of sight and their line of sight they're much more likely to follow you when you're conducting, is your head buried in the score? If you're not making the effort to engage your students, why should they make the effort to engage you? So again, get your head out of the score. You don't really need to watch the notes. They're not going to fly off the page or they're not going to change. You, you know, it's, it's clog dance. It's not Shasti 5 or anything like that. You, you got this. Another thing that you might want to do is to tie your left hand behind your back. Um, if you're giving two beats with two different hands, it's redundant information. It's outside of the, that line of sight that we talked about. It's completely unnecessary. The more extraneous information that you give, the less your students are going to watch and follow you. So maybe try tying that left hand behind your back and just using the right hand. And then when you decide to incorporate the left hand, decide what you want to do with it. Give it some jobs. And there's not a whole lot of jobs to do here in clog dance. You can give them some dynamics. You can show them the crescendo in 47, 48. Um, You can maybe at at 31, you know, you can be a traffic cop a little bit and make sure that they're not playing too loud. But do your best not to provide too much redundant information. Sometimes conductors will give redundant information. They're completely unaware of it. Like they'll be beating with their right hand and they'll be nodding with their head at the same time. So that, that kind of uh, defeats the purpose of what we're doing here to try to concentrate the beat into one place. Sometimes we'll see conductors bouncing up and down with their, with their knees, you know, or just, you know, especially the, the beginning or super enthusiastic, super energetic people. And, and we, we love those people in those positions. But when it comes down to the, the performance and, and making sure that all their students are playing together, we kind of have to dial that back a little bit and, and get into uh, serious mode. A little bit more. I hope you found this content useful for teaching clog dance. I hope you can take some of these ideas and apply it to some more of your favorite music because a, a lot of this will apply to a lot of the grade one uh, or beginning orchestra level music that's out there. If there's something that I didn't cover that you would like to know, go ahead and drop a comment in the comment section below and I'll do my best to address it. Or if you've got some tips or tricks that I didn't go over that you would like to share, Again, just drop a comment, and we'd love to learn from you too. So this has been Clog Dance, and we'll see you next time.